Okay, so we are going to have uh, file handling today. And there will be a few things for you guys to do. So be attentive and uh, just be there. Okay, so I'll be handling uh, uh, that for you for now. File handling, I'm just going to tell you that. And then you will have to practice it. So let's do it. So type of files, file handling is actually reading the data from the files, whether they are flat files or they are structured files. When I say flat files, flat files are your text files, like what you make in your notepad or uh, even MS Word and all, they are not structured. When I say structured file, it means they are in a tabular format, similar to a table, okay? All something like we have in SQL, MySQL, Oracle and all, something like that. If you have not seen, we can show you also. That's not an issue. I'll show you that also. If you have not seen how SQL file looks, we have MySQL here and we can do that also. So file handling actually is important because we have to read the data. So either <clears throat> through the files you are reading or directly from the net. So you can do that. So you'll be reading files from your flat files, text files. You can read from the PDF files. You can uh, actually read from uh, any source. It can be a docx file also. So docx file also, I can tell you, but I'll be telling you later. Uh, these files actually are used uh, uh, in a different way because they have headers and all, they have some sort of structure. Uh, or you can say some keywords which we have to understand to read the data properly. There are certain headers and all. Okay, so file for now, it will be flat files. We uh, then uh, CSV files, that is again, unstructured file, but it is, uh, you can open that in an Excel uh, thing. You can use Excel to open it and uh, okay. And uh, then you have the PDF files also. You can use uh, PDF files to read the data. That will be text data, but in Excel it will be, it can be text data, integer data, whatever data. Okay, then we can actually read from the images also. We can read the images, we can read uh, the videos, we can take the data from there also, but it is not uh, required for now. So we will just concentrate on flat files CSV files and PDF files, and then uh, later we can add up things whenever they are required. Okay, fine. And then we will be going to the machine learning part. But for now, we have to understand how to read the data because as I told earlier also, that data is very, very important, right? So data has to be read. So we will be doing that and uh, file handling. What we have to do in this case, we have uh, different types and uh, these are the text files I'm talking about. So we have something end of line characters or end of file also. And uh, they may be separated by a comma. A delimiter is there. When I say delimiter, delimiter is a separator between one word and the other word. It may be a space, it may be a comma, it may be a colon, it may be anything. So delimiter, but normally it is a comma separated file in a CSV format. Okay, so it can understand. Why we require it? Because how would uh, my system would understand that this is a, a word and this is a sentence, so the difference has to be there. So a separator is there. Otherwise, uh, you can always split uh, uh, the text and we'll be doing that. Also, we can split the text into tokens. And when I say tokens, that means uh, if I'm taking a text data, then each word will be a token. So we can uh, split the, the files. So when I read a file, the entire text can be read. Then I can break it into lines using EOL, end of uh, line character is there. Okay. And uh, 
normally end of line is uh, end of file is also there eof tag is there okay so let's see so we use uh, for a flat file so for flat file is your text file uh, you can open in a word uh, app or you can use uh, notepad to open it you can use anything to open a text file uh, normally we use notepad or wordpad whatever so the uh, command to open a file is open simple open then we give the file name and the mode okay so you can you open uh, the syntax is uh, here file object i have used this as a handler is equal to open file name and mode okay you have to remember that on uh, the variables are always on the left hand side so whatever is on the left hand side can always be replaced but what is on the right hand side they will be uh, uh, like uh, keywords or they will be functions modules or something uh, which we cannot actually change so the keywords you cannot change like open cannot be changed but the file name and mode can always change but mode we have limitations and i'm coming to mode okay so we have mode different mode different uh, mode of opening the files how you open the file and what type of uh, mode you want to use that depends on your application what exactly you want to do so if you just want to write a file what you do is you use w okay we can use simply w to write the file this is called a write mode also okay it's called a write mode you open the file and uh, you can write and if you have an existing file a text file so what you can do do is you can use r okay that is a read mode so you can uh, open the file in the read mode also it will just read it will not do anything and write will only write the file won't do anything else okay but we have to keep in mind that when we use w whatever existing data is there in the file will be erased okay so when we are using w mode the file opens and takes it as a new file so whatever is stored in the file will be erased so you'll have blank file and then you can write the file so to avoid that we have something like append mode so if the file is existing what you can do is you can use a mode and you can open the file the cursor will go to the line end of the file and there you can actually your data will be appended in the file added to the file existing file so data will be appended or added to the existing file you can use append mode also then comes your uh, other uh, options that is uh, your r mode we have uh, r plus also w plus also and uh, these plus actually gives uh, uh, the choice of reading writing you can read also write also but there is always a difference in that and that is what i'm going to tell you okay all right the file types we have then the mode we have read mode write mode append mode and r plus this is a special read write mode okay uh, oh, oh, one minute i put the plus sign on the wrong side it has to be r plus and a plus not plus a we have a r plus that is special read and write mode it can write also and read also now uh, r plus actually opens uh, the files uh, for reading and uh, it uh, actually streams in the stream that is the cursor is at the beginning of the file r plus okay so you can be used for reading and writing also now append mode actually opens the file in append mode only writing at the end of the file okay that is appending at the end of the file writing at the end of the file in r plus it is a beginning of the file the file is created if it does not exist right but in r plus 
you cannot do that it will won't open the file if it does not exist a only existing files can be opened using using r plus so everything has a plus so write plus w plus you can read and write no problems like in that is only at the beginning okay and uh, w actually erases also so if you have if you open it again then uh, the data is erased so we have a plus mode we can read and write append mode <clears throat> we can read file also and write file also using append the cursor will go to the end of the file if it exists is fine if it does not exist a plus will create so you can see that the best option normally used is a plus <clears throat> but you can have different options that is your choice if you just want to read the file nothing else then try to open in append mode okay to write a text file as i said it is only simple open okay first you have to open the file and the mode you have to give so the uh, syntax here is uh, if uh, you have the file handle is equal to open and uh, we will have test dot uh, txt then we have uh, the right mode since it does not exist so i'll be using the right mode okay now i have to write it on it so f dot right simple right and i'll show you what happens hello okay i'm just copy it how are you today and uh, what are your plans for your future i'm just writing with bigger sentences and we uh, write a few lines and uh, i can is an interesting language the future is python without machine learning without knowing uh, python you guys may not get Uh, the jobs in future or in present also so let's run it and uh, first time running takes time and we'll see where the file goes i hope i have uh, shared it properly so you can see it should be this point so today i think students are sleeping no issues if they sleep they will lose something Okay, so the number written here is thirty-three. Let's see what happened now. Now, on the left-hand side, you have this box. This is called files. Click on this. Okay, so we created test dot txt. Test dot txt is here. If I click on it, it doesn't happen. Nothing happens. You have to double-click on it. Double-click and open on the right-hand side. will open on the right hand side and we can see if uh, something is there or not so i don't see anything okay let me wait and see it should come and why it doesn't come you will know also see nothing has come fine okay why it hasn't come i'll tell you let me close it now and add one line f dot close okay now let me run it now the file was there but uh, since uh, we are doing it again so it will be erased and i'll show you see things have come but it has all gone in one line what is your acha future okay there is no space also so you can see that they have all gone in one line itself but the data is appended so f close is important it closes the handle and writes the file so i'll just write the 
mint you have to close the file so that the data can be written. Okay. So this is what we have. So I open test or txt w write mode and then you just append whatever you want to be writing actually, but it all goes in one line. So what I can do is uh, I can give a space also, but that's okay. Uh, we have other options, right and right line we have, so we'll do that. But uh, uh, let me show you something. Code. Okay. And I'll just copy this entire thing. It's fixed already. So and I'll change the text. Okay. Open the file again. And insert new dev. Hi guys. Permission and I'll just give a space so that they don't smudge. They don't overlap. Where are you? Space. Uh, for plans for today. Class should be interesting. Okay. Let's run it. And now see what the text was and what the text is and whether it has been appended or just erased and you can see that your file previous data has erased and new data has come right hand side you can see the output the data has gone it's not there right so let's close it so what we have understood here that if you open the file in right mode the data will go it won't exist anymore and now comes your option to have the data in separate lines so you can use a escape sequence slash in like this you can use this is called a escape sequence slash n slash t is for tab slash n is for new line you can use like this so you can use like this and you can write the file and the last you don't need this so why you want to have a slash in. Now let me run it let's open open the file double click right inside you can see now they are on separate lines okay so the data has gone on separate lines now good now let's close it hmm. let's go now to other options we have the we have already test uh, data so we can open it and uh, we can read and print let's see what happens handle is required so f is equal to the command will still be open and we have uh, what test dot uh, txt and we have a read mode okay so f dot uh, we have uh, another op, uh, object we need if uh, d is equal to f dot uh, read brackets and print d that's it uh, if i run it you can see that data has come simple so i can open it from there also check and i can read the data and then i can display the data 
okay so you can use r mode and you can read now if i want to read a particular line only so there are one two three four four lines we have here let's see if i put uh, yeah, line number let's say two he just see he only it reads he not the entire thing it was first was hello okay so let me give the number of characters i want to use two four five five let's see reading character wise you can see that hello now let me add some these are all in one line actually we have given a slash n that is uh, a tab so that's why you have uh, different lines so now we have how many characters uh, three uh, six uh, nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen plus uh, seventeen plus five is twenty two let's see let's see if i can read that you can see today that is last is left because there was slash in uh, 24 i think uh, there is space also yeah space is also counted as a character okay so it is you can see that it is reading number of lines it has nothing to do with uh, the number of characters sorry it has nothing to do with the slash n scape sequence it is all in line one line only but since we have given slash n that is a carriage return so the text has gone on the next line. Okay, now, okay, let's add the things. So, my students have woken, woken up from the sleep. That's good. Let's see. Mm we have options to read the lines also and write the line also and let me have this again not sure about python let me see if it works right line is there so we don't have to actually uh, use uh, slash n so let's see if it is there the right sorry like we have read line, we have write line also. And uh, Python will tell me, this collab will tell me. Lines, it is there. <coughs> so, I can use this. Let's see what happens. To take a lot of water. Very cold at noon, but still I'm drinking water. Lines. I'll remove slash and right lines. So let's see what happens. So we have now right lines and uh, whatever have we have given it will be erased i can use read also but it goes into one line you see right lines also it goes into one line only fine so we have to use slash and escape sequence if you want to write uh, the files properly so even if it is there so it doesn't take it so i'll just uh, put the entire code again because i want uh, the file to be proper to read. The right line also doesn't give a carriage return. And that is why I use slash. Anyway, that's okay. Now we have a right line, then we have uh, the read options, and then we have the read line option also. 
So I can uh, open the file. Uh, F is equal to open the data. Sorry, where has the bracket gone? Test dot uh, txt. Then read mode. Okay. Then D data. D is for data. Is equal to F dot read object is RPD. And we have read lines options also. So option is there, sorry, not options, option. F dot read lines, <clears throat> and then we have this print D. Let's see. See, now it gives you slash in. That is the sequence we used. When you're using the read lines, this is what you get. The slash in is not visible if I simply say read line but when i say read lines since it does not have lines so it won't but let me see if uh, i have the data that we are not read okay fine good enough now we have other options so you can see that it is in one line only and uh, mm, read lines also one minute i'll just put it here that will show you the difference Let's see. see now read lines shows that uh, uh, one uh, entire line is read with the carriage return slash n is there slash n is displayed also because it is a character only but it is appended, but in a text file, when I open it, you won't see slash n. What you see is a next line. Okay, so let's look. So if I have to use read lines, it will show me separately one line at a time. I can put a loop and I can do that also. And uh, we have a options to append the file okay so let's see the append mode and uh, read the whole so let's open it f is equal to open let me keep my original file as it is so test 2 dot txt and now open in append mode okay so f dot I'm using the right lines. Doesn't matter if I use this. And put it in a square bracket and data. Make a list basically. Okay, hello, slash, maybe slash. It is not here. Yes, slash n. Okay, then I need a separator, so I'll give a separator with a comma. And then again, next, how are you? Slash n. This is a pen, okay? So after a pen, huh? so I'll append in test only. I can uh, open the file or let me show you like this only. Okay? I'll make another one. This does, the file does not exist. Okay. File does not exist. So let me do it like this. Nice. Okay. And remember, we have to close the file. This is a pen mode, and uh, we can read the files. And F dot close. We close the files. Let's run it. Open test two. Double click on this line. You can see it is on different lines because slash n was there, and uh, test two is a separate file it was not there it was created 
so if the file does not exist it will be created but if the file exists then what happens let me is it again oh sorry i want to use this one straight lines you can read the lines you can read like this it once i have already pasted so let's see you can see this okay so data is there you can use read lines or read whatever when you're using read lines you get the carriage return also but here you are uh, append mode and this one in ml data the link is very important we should have clean this one open open test 2 there will be no new file but the data is up in it you can see the last one there was no slash n so it has gone on the third line the first uh, uh, word uh, has gone on the third line the last line of the file that means the cursor was waiting there and the moment i added the uh, data it just appended to it to it from where we left okay so let's go now further okay so with this we have done we can use a uh, uh, loop also to run the file so let's see and since you have done uh, your basic so i'm not going into the loops so at least go to open this has to be in quotes yes two dot txt uh, we have the write mode of the read mode now for text in f int text you can see this slash in was there so you can see there are more spaces than there are in the original file okay and then we have a, a function with the split uh, with the string and i can split actually and i can use something like this s txt read mode for text in f word is equal to text dot split and then print the word so what i want is uh, i want the uh, lines to be split into words let's see see hello how are you it is split one line and you can see these are all lists and this one two three four five we have five list here list with uh, five uh, rows you can say then hello how are you then have a nice day ml and all has gone in so every word has split now line by line okay line wise it has split so it is also important command split is very important when we when it comes to textual data if we have a text file so split will be required most of the time otherwise you won't be able to read 
if you want to find uh, you have to find the frequency of each uh, occurrence of each word then you won't be able to find if you don't use split command okay now let me use another way of writing that is with we have with the uh, open test3.txt write mode as f you can use this command to open the file in any mode okay and what is the advantage i'll show you we can put this is a loop actually with loop and you can put it like this and write one uh, line at a time something welcome to my python online classes then the institute the informatica that is uh, you can give whatever you want to give and let's see text depends on you what because since you are writing you can give that so you can see that it has gone on separate lines so when we use a loop then data will be appended to the next line the written you can say not appended this is not appending this is writing actually okay so you can use with to open the file in read mode write mode whatever mode you want and uh, we can use uh, now read mode to read the file so what i'll do is with open test three dot txt and the mode is uh, w and uh, as depends on you i'll give f only wrong. nothing is wrong f is okay. okay so now i read the line d dot f d equal to f dot read lines let us do it this first let's do this and then you know okay something went wrong i think read lines is okay the command is okay i have used f only let's see not readable the file is not readable let me see it is test three dot txt right oh sorry by mistake i copied it is not in the read mode it is write mode so you can see that the data is not there but why because i ran the file with w okay i uh, opened the file with w so it has erased my data you can see this the file will be there but it won't be having any data because it opened in the write mode okay so let's run the first one and then run this again it is read mode not write mode so welcome to my python online classes and so on you can read it like this now i want uh, the data to be on separate lines so what i can do is for ext in b uh, word I want WRD is equal to txt dot split. I can uh, use actually a print command also just to just uh, print it using it and storing it rather in the <coughs> variable so that I can use it later. That's it done. Okay, so you can see that it has tokenized has split into words all right so in text wise let me go back and show you this uh, those who just came so file handling is important as uh, data has to be read whether you are doing uh, machine learning deep learning or whatever you are doing or any analysis you are doing even printing or just plotting the data you need have to read the data you have to get the data from somewhere so what, what we are using here is 
fi file handling that is for the flat files i'll be using for now that is what i have already discussed the flat files and they all end with a line end of line character and the end of uh, file is also there then open the file we have options to read the uh, in read mode write mode append mode or r plus mode or a plus w plus and r plus is also there r plus is already uh, written there now between uh, a plus i have not written but uh, i have given the difference a plus mode <coughs> the difference between a, a plus and r plus is that r plus opens the file in read write mode it can read and write but the file should exist if it does not exist it cannot create the file then a plus mode we have append mode that is we can open the file in append uh, as we did earlier also and we have uh, here uh, the file uh, which does not exist can also be created by a plus mode if you are using a plus if the file does not exist it will be created and it will go the cursor will go uh, at the top because there is no data in it but if the data exists if the file exists so the cursor will go at the end of the uh, line where uh, it ended you can see that we have done it uh, practically and seen that it uh, uh, the data was appended to the last word from the last there was no space and uh, since we had not given any space in the last uh, word so last uh, sentence it was not the last word in the last sentence was not separated at the end with a space so the data gets appended without a space like but anyway so we have uh, options here to open the file then uh, we can use uh, write mode to open the file we have seen this and uh, it goes in one line if you don't give a separator so we can use a, a slash end to write uh, the files and uh, read it on separate lines then uh, read mode to read the data you can have different ways you can read uh, the number of characters or if you are using read lines then number of lines it can read then we have the write mode again we have seen that just to see if write lines work but it's okay it doesn't uh, give you a separator line separator unless you give a slash in then uh, read mode read the lines or you can read the number of characters or read lines with number of lines you want to read so i had given one command where is that mm -hmm. it disappeared or I uh, overwrote no, no it's there 25 no, 24 f dot read that is 24 characters it will read from the beginning uh, it is in write mode so the number of characters will be like this okay so append mode read mode write mode then we can use uh, the for loop to read the file and uh, just uh, display line by line then we have a split function that will split uh, split the line into tokens and when i say tokens these mean that means words okay now then we have a uh, the option to open the file with with uh, uh, loop with open test 3.txt write mode as if and when i now if i write the file i don't have to give a slash n it will just append add on not append it will just keep on adding uh, the data and till we give and we don't have to close it also otherwise we have to close the file every time so it closes the file and uh, just writes the file for you on a separate line so a separator for separator slash n is not required in this case now then we have uh, opened the test uh, again we opened the file in read mode we have read the lines and we have just printed that 
you can use with, uh, with to open the line, the file, sorry. And then we have a for loop to read the data and the split the data into tokens. Words. So you can use whatever you want. Now, I'll be giving you something to do, but not now. Let me first uh, get things which are required. CSV files. So different modes we have. In the module, we can find different functions with CSV. Okay, so we have uh, like a uh, Right. All right. Let me click here first. All right. So what you can get, get is the limit that is uh, CSV file size, field size limit that is returns the maximum field size. Then dialect is associated with the name. Then dialects shows registered dialects. Then reader read the data from a CSV file. If you just want to open a file and read, you can use a reader. Uh, register dialect, association dialect names, then uh, write, you can write, csv.write, you can write the file. Then the uh, unregistered dialects, that is a delete dialect association with the name. And then we have the quote all, quote everything regardless of type, then minimal, non, numeric, and none. These uh, are the quote, uh, quotes that is special characters and the fees that aren't number values. And don't have an output to do, uh, quote anything in out. Don't uh, quote anything in the output. That is quote none. Okay. So we have different options here. But normally, what we use is only the reader and the writer. That is what is required, not nothing much. Limits and all, you can okay, find the, the size if you want to get. But uh, there are other options. So normally, we will be using only two reader and writer. So CSV file actually is in your comma separated text file right it's a comma separated separated text file and uh, if you try uh, to open in excel it will open and uh, whatever the separated thing is the data goes into different columns so you can have a comma separated file like this okay we will see you can create the files and see how they behave. Okay, so not a big deal. If we have a file, then uh, you can always use that. But for starting this, let me import a module. Import module to read a CSV file. What you need is import CSV. There are different ways actually, you know, different modules also. Now uh, I have to put the data, so I have some uh, data already written, a command already written, so I'll just copy it from there. Now, okay. uh, I'll give the file name. This I have used already, so I just have university records for CSV. What I have given is fields that is name, branch, year, and CGPA. Now, when I say fields, that means they are your headers, column headers. You have the column headers, so these are the in the table column headers, so these are the headers, then the data. And uh, you have to see that the number of headers and number of uh, records here should be same. That means number if there are four headers, then it has the, they should have four. If it, it uh, the data is not there, you can leave it blank with the quote. Right, but uh, that is dangerous. Any non value, any empty cell gives an error. You just have to keep in mind that there should be no NAN. We have ways to clean it, but that's okay. We should not have any blank cells okay now we have uh, here the names the nickel coe 2021 9 cgpa 
then Sanchit, then Aditya, Sagar, Pratik, Sahil. These names are there. So we have put the branch, year, and CGPA. Okay. Now we have given the name of the file as uh, university records.csv. You can create for your own also. Okay. Then we have to write to CSV file. How you write? It's very simple. You can use vip command like we open the, the file, which is as simple as that. You can use open and uh, you can write the CSV file like that also. As CSV. And okay. And we have uh, other ways also. So that's not the thing worry about with open we can use csv i have not used csv i'll be using now to write i've opened the file in the write mode but like a text file because it is a comma separated text file only so now we i want a writer so i need this thing creating a csv writer object csv writer csv dot writer csv file that is uh, the file we are using here this one now we have to write the headers first so write the headers okay let me put it write the headers you don't write in the wrong indentations it should be proper then csv to write the dot write rows you can use oops write rows okay. row or rows you can use I'll just use uh, Go and then I have to use the fields. These are the fields. This is fields or uh, field fields. Okay. Now uh, write the rules. Right, and here I read rows. Use row or rows that depends on you. Now, so we have uh, imported CSV, then fields, the rows, file name, it open. We have given file w, right mode, and then I can run the file. Now you can see, can't see anything, it will be here. Okay, open this double click open and uh, there is an error it is not uh, I can save it there should be no error actually either it is still writing could not fetch in history records back in details there's some error here Let's wait for two minutes and run the code again. Let me check it. Let me download and check. Okay, open it. If it is still writing, it won't open. Now, the data is there. It's very much there. Although it is not written properly, but the data is very much there. It's not open, uh, not able to open the file for unknown reasons. We can dial, actually download this file and check the records. When I download it, uh, it opens. So it is okay. 
Let me see if I can share it with you. Let me share it, save it first. Let me see what I get and then I'll share it with you. Okay, this may be the reason why the data is not properly written. Let me see if I can share. You cannot share more than one of the okay, that's okay. Let me share it again. Window the Excel file. Okay, share. This is the file which is created. You can see this. So the data has gone like this. We should not go like this. And that may be the reason why it is not able to open it. It should be one by one, right? So we'll be doing it. That's okay. So I'll just uh, stop. I'll uh, share the code again. Unknown caller. Okay, that's a, uh, so, so we'll be writing in a better way. So this is uh, the data which was created, but it is not in a proper format. So let's uh, have a different uh, format and see why it uh, did not work. Although it should have, but uh, the format is a little different. We are using the right row and uh, and the reason why it did not come would be because of right row. So let me have the rows here and see it goes in the proper format or not. Okay. So right rows, that is row wise, one by one. Otherwise, it is writing in the same file. Okay. Let's open. And if it is proper, then yeah, that will come. You can see this. So one S was missing in this. So right row won't work. You can see that. The data went actually one in e, every row went in a header. So we need rows to write the data. You can see that data is created name, branch, year, CGPA, and this is there. Right? Okay. Now let's do some more coding import we have already imported so we don't need uh, to import the file again so that is uh, something we have an advantage with collab or jupyter also so now what we can do is we can uh, use a dictionary to write the data we can create a dictionary right from a dictionary. This was a list. This was a list. It was there. Now we can see that we can write the data from a dictionary also. Okay. Let's write from the dictionary. And, uh, I have the data, so I'm not going to. It's the same thing. Huh? Since we are using a uh, right mode, so the data will be erased. So now branch, we have given CGPA, we have given and we have given. So we have not given the headers separately. Here we have given the dictionary in the dictionary itself. Okay. Now
we can use the same command we can use the same command to write so i'll just copy it from here so now what i have to change here is my dictionary in the last my okay fine just run it see now uh, it is university dictionary you can see this so data what has gone actually is your cgpa branch name and year not the data itself right so we have to um, see what happened and what went wrong and we have to correct it okay so we can correct that is not a big deal now the reason why it has gone because we have given the fields here we, we don't require fields actually so i can remove it later we have to write the headers to write headers we have to just call okay write and uh, we have to actually change this also we have to give in dictionary writer we have to call we can't use this we have to use dictionary writer this one so what i need is write is equal csv dot uh, dictionary writer csv file which is the name of the file uh, csv file is the name of the file that is where we have opened yeah, this object then field name is equal to fields that is why i have to give, uh, give this otherwise it won't uh, know that uh, what is the header uh, and this is what you have seen that it has uh, actually taken headers and written the headers everywhere right now csv writer dot we have to use now write header function right you have to create some errors to understand okay write uh, header. Okay. Right header, sorry. Rose CSV right dot road. Rose though is uh, okay. Right rose is uh, my dick my dick study. My dictionary. Right header, my dictionary. It should be okay now. See if I use the same command, it won't work. Because this this was a list, and this is a, a dictionary. So let's see, uh, where is that gone? I need a Right header is not coming. Let me see what went wrong. Right header is okay. Right header is there. CSV. Okay, I have to use to writer here. I have used writer here, so I have to use writer here also. And here also, I have to use writer. I created the object here uh, writer, so it's not CSV writer. I just copied from here, so that's why it was an issue. That's okay. Now everything is fine. So what we have done is we have created a dictionary. Then we have given the names which we have used in the dictionary as the labels. Then we have to file give the file name. Picture my university dictionary as csv then we have to open the file then we with open file name wrcsv file 
you write a csv dictionary a dictionary writer you call that then csv file that is the file of the handler then field names as fields which we have given here and then uh, write dot uh, headers because this is the object we have created to write and then write the names or the rows using this data you can say the writer dot write rows my dictionary so when i run it the file will be created and now it will be have the records not the rows you can see that the data is there okay all right Now we have created, we have to read also. So let's see how we read a CSV file. Read CSV file. Okay, now import CSV. Oops, not CSV file. It's already there, so I don't have to import CSV. Unless I uh, re run it, unless I clean it. Like we have uh, here tools to clean, restart runtime. If I restart from runtime, then I have to actually uh, import again. But it is not required here. It is already there. So why should I import? I just have to open with open the file you want to read. You can use university records or CSV. That was uh, this one. Copy it. just to avoid the uh, mistakes, spelling mistakes. I normally copy okay. the double quote, so I'll just remove it. Doesn't matter if you use single quote or double quote, it won't matter much here. As I have to give the name as if okay. we have read the file. We have to read the data. So we use data is equal to CSV read. We can use CSV <coughs> dot reader. We have a reader command to read. And we have read the uh, data. Now for row in data, print. You can see that data is there. Okay, so just have to read it like this. You can create your data like this. Simple reading. Okay, so what else we can do? We can have the headers, field rows. We can separate them, put them in the header names, and uh, we can do that also. Let me read the file name and I show you. We can do more things with this. Now, what we are doing is for university records dot CSV, yeah, and the fields and the rows. We are initializing uh, actually to lists, okay, fields and rows, so that we can uh, read the data and put it in there. So we open the file name in read mode, a CSV file, CSV reader, CSV dot reader, CSV file, then field. Uh, csv uh you can use uh, fields equal to csv reader dot next or what you can do is uh, go in a csv reader you can append also and just created actually i'm not uh, using a uh, reader dot next what i'm doing is i'm just uh, opening the file and then for row a row in ESV reader, a row in the CSV reader, CSV reader. Yeah. We have uh, the rows, so rows dot append. 
Okay. I can open the above command also for the fields. So I can just see. So we, I can see it. First run, uh, let me run it and then I'll uh, put more records. So if there is some error, then it will come. That is why I actually marked it. Okay, yeah, this is this actually uh, reader has no next. Actually, things uh, change over the years, so it is not there anymore. I have commented it. But we can use other ways. Now, We'll use some commands to get uh, the row numbers. Number of rows. We can have this. Yes, we need to dot line number. Let me run. This will work. CSV reader. Yeah, we use CSV reader here. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 It has to be actually CSV reader uh, is a local variable. It is a local, so I have to put it here. This is because of the indentation. Nothing else. Everything in one indent, single indent. This is uh, some issue which comes with uh, Python. So when the file is open, so in in uh, in that only you have to do this. So no, it should be okay. Total num number of rows that is one by one we are printing. So number of rows that is seven one by one we are reading. So that's okay. Now I have to print the header names. So what I can do is field names that is headers oops sorry print the uh, field names like this we use the join function uh, that we have already seen fields for fields in fields uh, for field in fields you read fields this is a compound for loop I'll explain that later, but just understand that it is something like a, a compound. This is a very frequently used com a command, the compound for loop, and what it is doing actually, what it is, you read it like this. It will be simple to understand. For fields in fields. And then you have something uh, like uh, the, let me explain it. Uh, and show you <coughs> separate lines. This is comment again. Okay? It says that uh, something like for field and fields. Then we store f uh, f is equal to fields. Something like this we do. But here what we are doing is something else. What we are doing is, oh, sorry. So this data goes here, F. But when I use a compounded uh, for loop, then I don't have to actually write uh, another variable and store it. It automatically goes into this only. And this can be joined with header names R to display. So you can simply display and see if it is working. Yes. For the field in the fields, F is equal to field. Okay, let me remove it first. Data names are uh, join. Okay. Now why it is giving like that? Interesting. Okay. It should come. Enter names, fields for field in fields. We don't have anything here. Yeah, we don't have any records here, so it won't come. I'll uh, change that command. 
So let me read this header. I can use header command also. I can simply read the header just like that. I don't have to do anything. I can have a command like a header. But this field is not working. Let me have why it is not working. It doesn't have a next, okay? I'll a line number here. So we don't have uh, the reader. Next is not there. Next is not there, so it won't read the headers. But we have a different way of reading the headers. That is, uh, we have uh, the print. Uh, uh, simply header, uh, you just give uh, the rows and all. You can uh, use the for loop and you can print it. Or we can have the, uh, if it is a data frame, then we have, we have headers also. But uh, that's fine. Let's see how it, I can uh, display the data. Let's display the data first from the CSV file. It will read the header also. What I'm doing is we I'm, I'm not converting to a data frame. If I convert it into a data frame, it will be very easy for me to display that data. And that's OK. For now, we just have to understand that we have to read uh, print five rows in a R. This is what we have appended, rows.append. So we are just appending the rows, one to five, for column in rows, print just uh, 10s strings. Run it. Okay, we don't have this. So I'll, I'll get you the command for this also. You can have the data, the rows you can display. <coughs> so it has uh, actually gone into a list. We have created a list of the rows and we are just displaying the data without the headers. Okay, we have options to read the header, and that is a bit better way, actually. And uh, let's display the data in a different way. We have a reader, simple CSV dot dictionary reader, open university records, and simply print the data. But it will be like this: order dictionary. I don't want that. Okay, I don't want that. So I can use pandas now. Import pandas as PD. I can have a better look at my data. You can see that. One by one, I'll run. Here, what I have given is pd.read csv. So pandas has a command read csv. I can read csv, university records.csv, and then header is equal to zero. Just see what the data will come. Okay, so this is the data we I get. Now I'll give header is equal to one. That was zero. You have to tell from where the header is starting. Okay, so you can see that nickel has become the header now. Okay, so you can print uh, the data and then we can get the matrix also, the shapes also, like this. I'll just show you uh, what happened. The shape is a 5 4, 5 by 4. Then uh, columns, you can get the columns. So index, you can get like this. Okay. Then data types of uh, the data, you can get. So this is important. This is required.
you can add your own uh, headers also and two other things also with it so i think i can give you small break and uh, then we can uh, actually do more things right and i can give you something to do also so the just go through it and this uh, thing i'll uh, see what we can do how to read the it is this next uh, used to work actually earlier but the modules keep on updating so this is not working now and uh, since it is older version so uh, of the command so uh, even it is not giving any warning uh, otherwise it normally suggests you that uh, you should be using this and it will be truncated and all but it is now older old enough that it won't be there so we, we are not using the headers here but pandas we can use pandas and we can uh, you can see that uh, with pandas we have more options we can read the data these days actually normally people are using pandas only so they don't bother to see that so uh, you can read the shape or you can read the columns simple columns and you get that also because uh, headers was uh, zero you can see that your header was zero but if i read the data again with header is equal to one the data will be different so that is not the header you can see that let me put it here header is equal to zero that is the first row has to be the header if i run it you can see that name branch here in cgp has come so that was the aim of getting the headers that is there with pandas so it's easier people we are using pandas most of the time and in numpy uh to read the data and manipulate the data or do the calculations so we normally don't use it but in any anyway there should be some command and we will see how we can use it next next but it has to be there it keeps on updating so we have to update ourselves also sometimes it just misses out anyway so what you can do is we can take a break of uh, let's say 30 minutes and you can go through the things just go through, read them, and uh, try them also, if you can. Otherwise, we'll be doing it at the end of the class. Definitely, we'll be doing it. So I have to give you more CSV files and PDF files. So we have to read more of those. Okay. So I'll just stop the recording for now. <laughs>